So after getting here and checking out the menu, it's non non negotiable that I show you guys where we're having a meal. I wasn't really gonna do this, but I hope you guys appreciate coming in to an epic brunch because I know part of the fun watching is feeling like you're there and you're about to be here on some serious, serious card action at the Waffle Iron, AKA the Iron Waffle. This is insane. Fingertips and tap right underneath your collarbones. All right, everyone, welcome to the video. So, back in town, trying to get my bearings straight here because I was so relaxed between the springs, the food, sleeping, the weather, the beautiful snow, the fresh air, the silence. It was unbelievable. And again, I always say that's one of my favorite things about Colorado and what you get to see. So, we're back in town, hit yoga. Gonna go train now, gonna do a pull day. <clears throat> so the schedule was legs, push day, and then that same push day we went out to Steamboat. So obviously took the next day off, and now it's the, uh, well I took a day off from the push day. So gonna pull today, hopefully hit legs tomorrow, and then if we don't hit legs too hard we can push again. So plenty of working out to do this week, which is great. Just gotta recover, eat, and do everything else properly after a vacation. Things like that just get a little simpler. So let's go to the gym. It's time for a pull sesh. Peace. Woo. All right, what's going on everyone? Thank you for joining me for this video. Another pull day back in town and we're getting back into these workouts. So we're gonna go straight through here for about only four more minutes. Basic pull day with a very, very simple push accessory and one that I'm going to start using when my shoulders are too sore. So when I was on my trip, after and during the same day of that push day and the day after, I was a little anxious during my trip because I had soreness right here and right here. And obviously that's just muscle or connective tissue soreness, but I've never really had it before. And it kind of felt like I did like 10 sets of lateral raises. So nothing painful in the joint, nothing painful in like a bicep tendon or you know, the anatomical things of the shoulder that we, we understand as lay people. It's just like right here. I really don't know how to describe it. It's not a rotator cuff, so it just feels like the deltoid. Now, one thing I did do differently in this workout was just a slightly different position of face pulls, and I'm learning how to do the face pulls. So I always see people prescribe face pulls, coaches, trainers, just regular gym bros. They're like, face pulls, face pulls, and they're doing like half a stack with terrible form. So on this day, or the day before this, I was doing similar form to what I did this day, pulling and really separating and finishing it. But now I'm learning how to keep my chin back, my eyes a little higher and really pull to that bridge of the nose. So I didn't know if it was the heavy barbell press. I didn't know if it was the benching. I didn't know if it was um, from the face pulls that I did the day of Memorial Day. But I'm happy to note a little patience and then a focus on a pull workout just seems to be that it was actually the face pulls that made me sore there. So I was able to PR on chins yesterday, and this was officially my 
29th and 30th rep of chins. I think I'm gonna go just slightly wider on my grip because I'm getting a little bit of this action. I, I'd rather be elbows tucked than elbows kind of flared. But again, I'm not really sure. It could just be my lats. Luckily, I don't have huge triceps, so it's not super in the way, but the meaty part of my tricep does kind of get in that way, especially when I'm weak, it's hard to work against it. So, so after those chins, like I said, my shoulders were a little tight, either from the pressing of the face pull, so I just warmed up to two sets of 45 pounds with my prescribed uh, one-arm dumbbell press with resistance against the wall out in front of me. So that press, much like I said about the warm-up, that press is so that instead of just pressing up and leaning back, you have to push and instead of pressing your hands straight up, you press against the other direction. Just like when you warm up on a wall, just like if you have a band attached and you're pressing with the band tension in front of you, just like when you brace against the wall, have to lean over slightly and instead of pushing forward, you now still have to push up, but you create more angle here you're gonna work the back of the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, those muscles that allow that retraction during the press. So very, very healthy. And I would start using that exercise if you guys want more press variation. It's very good on the tricep because you have to lean away a bit and you can really lock out your tricep, kind of like a circus dumbbell press. So not only is it a good exercise for physical therapy, you can get a little body English safely. You can use a little bit of a foot drive, a leg drive perhaps. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you feel like you can really lock it out and get more tricep work out of it, then why not? And that's something I felt. So for the push days, I'm gonna try to stick with the barbell press. And for the pull days, depending on how my presses are going, I should definitely stick with that one arm dumbbell press as an accessory for my pull days. So I don't go ape sheet and try to press 185 overhead every single pull day and get out of hand with it. So I was able to hit my chins, then I went straight into the presses for a few working sets. Seated row and shrugs. Nothing fancy about back training. When you don't want to load your lumbar spine, it eliminates a lot of bent over stuff, which right now, as I'm healing and getting back into lifting, just avoiding that slowly, but we're going to build everything back up. Stay tuned. Peace. Okay, so Amira Haye, thank you for like the best comment of the year. Your content is highly authentic now. I love following your life and seeing how you conquer Challenges where there are, well, there are a lot of things that I don't include in uh, in YouTube, I guess. Mostly a lot of like personal struggles, but this summer is going to be very challenging. I'm going to be relocating to St. Louis. I'm going to be starting grad school. I'm probably going to have to stop YouTubing. I quit my tutoring job to move, signed a new lease in St. Louis, and I have to leave all my friends here that I made in the past two years. And I won't have time really for them anymore. So it honestly is heartbreaking, but getting into physical therapy school is one of the hardest things I've ever done. I applied to 11 schools and only one accepted me. Plenty waitlisted me, but no one else has accepted me up until this point. So I barely got into school and it's about a 5% acceptance rate. So here locally in town, I went to an interview and they had uh, 1,280 applicants and 200 people that they interviewed. So out of the 200 people, I think they took uh, 44. Odds are in the single digit percentages, usually on the southern end of that, so five or less. Long story short, I will try to include some of my challenges, but I really appreciate the love and the likes and those things just kind of validate that deciding to film what I want to film and trying to make it fun for myself is also making it fun for those of you that are following. So thank you. And before I keep rambling, um, I'm just very, very appreciative of that. And I'm thinking about all the stuff I have to still do this summer and relocating, but that's life. And uh, my career is going to be what really, really matters these next few years for me. So thank you and uh, stay tuned. All right, Urban, I enjoyed your perspective. May you please touch on the whole cheat meals crucial while in a deficit? This is my first cut that I've heard to, and I have those days where I'm losing my ish. I do implement a few higher carb days every 10 days, enjoying a free day every now and then, and I'd like to try toying with it. I think cheat meals are crucial while in a deficit. Definitely, whether it's a refeed or whatever you want to call it, having high calorie breaks from a diet are crucial. Why? Psychologically. And what comes on the back end of that is actual changes in your physiology, which is like horrible if you never ever take cheat days for months. 
But aside from hurting yourself with hormones in the short term, it's psychological. So if you eat six days in a row, five meals a day, and every single one of those meals leaves you in an energy deficit because you did cardio before your first meal, because your third meal and fourth meal and fifth meal had no carbs, like when you eat in an entire day and you've burned fat and have been in a deficit, after three to five, six days of doing that, Having a cheat meal gives you a break to do it for six more days. So let's say you do have a cheat meal or a cheat evening. If you put on a little bit of body fat, whatever, 50 grams or a fifth of a pound of body fat, you have six more days of better workouts, harder, not necessarily harder dieting, but on those same you know, 2,500 calories, you'll do more. You'll fidget more. You'll be more productive because you cheated. So that is my, as a coach, as a, an athlete, as a, someone who competed in physique, someone who loves bodybuilding and likes to have a decent body composition, you eat crap so that you can eat healthier and enjoy it more and be more productive and be less food focused. So yeah, they are crucial for sure, but not necessarily because your metabolism will get screwed up. If your metabolism gets screwed up, you're starving yourself aggressively and yeah, I can't really, cheat, cheat days aren't gonna make that okay. I just tried to call Scott and Devin because uh, <clears throat> apparently apparently Matt Porter died, so he's a bodybuilding coach that I follow. Former NPC competitor, just had a son, um, has a wife, his dad passed a few years ago and he kind of reinvented himself and his company and he's actually someone I admire a lot and someone who's been doing really great things in the industry. Kind of reminds me of like a John Meadows or a Dave Bourlay even like a Jay Cutler, he's really he's really one of those guys. I know a lot of people say bad things about him. They called him Matt DNP Porter, things like that, but I'm just shocked and I feel like I felt when Dallas died, it's just like, it's sad because when someone in this industry passes, it's like, not only do you feel horrible and uncertain, the first thing people think is like drugs or was it an accident after like late night cardio or he fell asleep or like, Either way, if it's related to bodybuilding, it's like just it's just tragic because the effort that people put in and just the love and the passion people have, the drive you have to have, you know, to do that post workout cardio where you're falling asleep and you never know. Hopefully, my boys will call me back. It's interesting, it's sad. I guess we'll stay tuned. R.I.P. Matt Porter. That's a shame. Uh, good luck to your clients, your wife, and your son.